Hey, welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet. Today we're on location in Babcock State Park in southern West Virginia. I'm going to cook up a great dish for you guys out here in the wilderness in the Dutch oven. So stay tuned. <music> So today's dish is going to be braised short ribs with red wine right in that good old Dutch oven. We got them with the bones in there. That makes this thing oh so delicious. So I hope you stick around and watch how we do this in the Dutch so oven. I got a chimney of charcoal and got a whole chimney going up there. Probably going to need it, especially as cool as it is. So here's what you're going to need to make today's dish. And pardon my shadow and everything. I can't pick which way the sun's coming from here today. Short ribs. Um, this is 1.74 pounds or four ribs about two ribs per person these things are very rich these used to be cheap 634 a pound I used to get them for like three bucks stupid crazy veggies potatoes onions carrots celery optional mushrooms and if you go with maybe with mushrooms go with the baby Bella's uh, there's a baby Porcini, I believe those real the real name for those, but they're marketed under Baby Bellas. To me, they have a lot more flavor. All right, seasoning. You're gonna need salt, pepper, and garlic. I get this Killer Hogs AP. It is a beautiful blend of salt, pepper, and garlic. Good stuff, all in one. Some broth here. Today I got some concentrated bone beef broth. Experiment with that a little bit today. Some olive oil. A cup of red wine drinking wine uh, t t uh, camp tip if you're gonna be cooking with wine Walmart has those in four packs and uh, you can just open what you need you don't have to worry about the whole big glass bottle plus it's a plastic bottle won't break okay so you don't have to worry about it in the cooler some water some utensils got a big mamma jamma Dow strong knife right there if you'd like to check out some Dow Strong Knives, I'll leave you a link in the description box for a very, very nice discount on Dow Strong Knives. All right, so first thing you want to do is we want to get these guys out of the package and see if they have a membrane on the back side of that bone. Big mamma. Jim, I brought this one because it's never. I didn't know exactly what all I was going to end up cooking out here for you guys. We've been trying to get this done. We were actually here yesterday poured down rain the entire time we were here we did actually get under the picnic pavilion and make some beautiful grilled cheese though so it looks like it does have that film or membrane on the back side of the rib and you use your knife and get under that edge and grab it with a paper towel and pull it off that's going to help for your seasoning a to get in there and b you don't have to worry about trying to eat that tough membrane Give that a good dose. Remember, this is all going to get watered down. Don't be afraid of putting too much season on them because only so much is going to stick to them to begin with. You see the fire leaping out of that chimney of charcoal. I'm going to put about half of them down in my camp grill. And I'm going to flip this bad boy over, bring it up to its top position. Hopefully, we put on our camp plate that we made. It fits to every camp grill I've found so far. Usually it fits down inside of it. This one's a little narrower, but it fits fine on top. And we're gonna go ahead and do kind of a one line method on top here. I'm gonna grab my tongue. those out into one single line we want good bottom heat for this first part which is going to be searing those short ribs all right so we want them about as wide as whatever oven you're using today we're using the tent the lodge so 
If those coals die down over there a little bit from being choked off by the oven, then we can move them back over here and keep up our heat. Also have my Lodge 4-in-1 lid stand sitting over here off camera to keep my lid. So here we go. Let's let that get preheated because it is cold. In the 50s here today, how cold for us here, you know, Floridians. I said that oil has had a little minute to get ready. And I'm going to put these guys in bone side up first because that's the fatty side is the opposite side. I definitely want to get a good sear on that fatty side. And you see that four is going to fit just about perfect in our tin. If you want to up this up to more, 12 or the 14. It's got a nice sizzle going on. If it starts to die down, we'll just move the oven over to the other side of coals. See, I might move a few of these around the outside to try to bring that temperature up just a bit. All right, so the wind's blowing here a little bit. Like I said, it's in the 50s. I wish this would come up to temperature a little quicker than it, than it is. And uh, the reason it's not is the wind's blowing the heat away from the coals. So I got this a while back. Um, this is available on our Amazon store. It is a very convenient and easy little lightweight, easy to pack shield for your Dutch oven. Comes in a nice hearty case. I keep it in the back of the truck all the time. Folds out like this. Self-supporting. So we're going to go ahead and install that around our pot and hopefully that will bring our temperature up. So the wind is coming from the side toward me. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of see if I can get that to stay. Even if you have to lean it against the pot, that's okay. Alright, so I've browned every side of these except the bone side. Except the bone side. I left the bone side alone for now. Every other side, brown. Taking them out. Okay. They're nice and seared now. Take them out temporarily. Then we'll drain this grease off. And that's going to reduce the fat in our dish. And then we'll put them back on and let them roast for another 15 minutes. All right, so back into roast, bone side down. All right, and that's the last time we're gonna to touch them. That's why I want that bone side down by where the liquid's gonna be. Okay, and that liquid's gonna take all oh, that good yummy out of the bone. Set the top for 350, full ring around the outside, four on the top. Now, uh, take a little break keep an eye on them about every five minutes or so and uh, what we're doing now is we're going to be developing that nice fond in the bottom of the pot that's going to flavor this dish incredibly all right it's been about seven or eight minutes and you see how they've drawn up off the bone and that's what we're looking for <clears throat> they are nice and seared some of the a lot of the fats rendered. We're going to develop that nice bone broth. In goes about a cup and a half of water, just about enough to cover the bones. Then we're going to. This is optional. You don't have to put this in, but beef broth. This is bone broth. I'm going to give that just a little squirt. I'm going to be easy with that because some of this stuff can be too salty. But I'm going to leave them exposed like that for a little while. And what's going to happen is that steam's going to get, start creating kind of a pressure cooking effect and tenderize the beef. So the lid back on. Just keep an eye on her. So I went in and I just laid them over in the broth and I'm going to go ahead and add 
about a half a cup of the red wine. Yeah, stick the lid back on. Let them simmer a little bit more. And see these coals are starting to die down. So what I'm gonna do is refresh some of the coals down below. They'll be stored down below the grill and bring them up to the top to refresh those coals. So it's been about another 15 minutes. So what we're gonna do now is just go ahead. I chopped all these veggies real rough. Go over on the tailgate there. Just kind of get them down in there. Nestled around your ribs. I'm not gonna put any more seasoning on them yet. We'll let them cook down a bit and we'll check them and you can see from all the smoke started another half chimney of charcoal see the temperatures out here today um, and I'm using Kingsford it's getting really hard to find you know the premium charcoals around where I live it's like the only thing they want to have is like lump charcoal which burns up even faster than Kingsford So if you are going to put in mushrooms like I'm going to, again, optional ingredient. If you like them, some people love them, some people don't. Wait about halfway through your vegetable cooking time, which is going to be about 20 minutes um, before you put those in. They'll turn out a lot better for you. Last time I tested this, potatoes are almost tender. I'll set the lid down on the four and one. Check them again. Oh yeah. They're ready. Short ribs look awesome. Little cornstarch and water. I was, I was considering doing milk. I'm like, well, this got red wine in it. I don't know how those two are on. Marry up with each other. So just a dash. Get that sauce to your satisfaction you could throw a half stick of butter in here right now that would be awesome which I might right now I'm gonna leave it uncovered by the way this is the spoon I found at the with Lakushi Kummer hump camp that's already worn was worn down so far it's misshapen and a uh, silver plated spoon and I've kept it and I've used it in my outdoor gear as a as a kind of a memento for the way people used to do it and that right there looks awesome I'm gonna get that off let it cool down a minute and we're gonna be ready to eat
Oh, that tastes good. <laughs> warms you up it's good so thanks for watching the backwoods gourmet here on location in babcock state park west virginia did that beautiful short rib dish on the dutch oven it turned out great so if you like what we're doing please smash that like button right down there if you'd like to see another great backwoods gourmet video it's gonna be right there and for a whole playlist of dutch oven and cast iron cooking gonna be right up there we'll see you next time